Okay, so today we're gonna start on page 40 and we're gonna talk about ratio tables. So this is a, an example of a ratio table. Ratio tables have equivalent fractions and they're equivalent ratios because they all simplify to the same thing. So one third is the first fraction or ratio. Two six is the next one, which if you simplify it is also one third and three ninths can also be simplified to one third. So because they all simplify to the same thing, they're equivalent ratios, and you could put equivalent ratios together in a ratio table. Now we're gonna go to page 42, and we're gonna do some example problems. Number one says, Santiago receives an allowance of $7 every week. How much total does he receive after four weeks? Complete each ratio table to solve each problem. So we know that we need equivalent ratios. So we have seven over one, so we could fill this in. Seven, 14, 21, 28, one, two, three, and four. So the top row represents his allowance and the bottom row represents the number of weeks. It wants to know how much does he receive after four weeks. So here's four weeks. So that means he receives $28 after four weeks. So the answer is $28. Number two, Tanya runs eight kilometers in 60 minutes. At this rate, how long would it take her to run two kilometers? So on the top of the table, we have kilometers and on the bottom we have minutes. So we know that she runs eight kilometers in 60 minutes. So we want to get to two kilometers. So we could fill in the table, but another thing we can do is we can go from eight to two using multiplication or division because equivalent ratios are found by multiplying or dividing. So I know eight can be divided by four to get to two. So I can do the same thing to the 60 to keep it equivalent. So 60, we would also divide by four, and that gives us 15. So as long as we do the same multiplication or division on the top and bottom, we'll end up with an equivalent ratio. So for two kilometers, it would take her 15 minutes. And you can always check if your fractions are equivalent by simplifying them and make sure that you get the same simplified fraction. So 8 sixtieths simplifies to 2 fifteenths. So that means they are equivalent. Number three, Lamika buys 12 packs of juice boxes that are on sale and pays a total of $48. Use a ratio table to determine how much Lamika will pay to buy eight more packs of juice boxes at the same store. So we have to fill in the table ourselves. So 12 packs of juice is $48. So 12 packs of juice is $48. We wanna know how much will it cost her to buy eight packs. So if you notice, we can't go from 12 to eight using multiplication or division. So when this happens, what we have to do is simplify 12 48 first. So if we simplify 12 48, we get 1 fourth. And then from the 1 fourth, we can go to the eight. So I have to see how can I go from one to eight using multiplication or division. So I know going from one to eight is going bigger. So it's times eight. One times eight gives me eight. So I have to do four times eight on the bottom and that gives me 32. So that means to buy eight juice boxes, it would cost her $32. So when you can't use multiplication or division to go from what you're given to what you wanna find, first simplify the ratio and then use the simplified ratio to get to your answer using multiplication or division. 
So let's do two more examples. So we're gonna go to page 45. Let's do number 13. It says, if a hummingbird were to get all of its food from a feeder, then a 16 ounce nectar feeder could feed about 80 hummingbirds a day. How many hummingbirds would you expect to be able to feed with a 12 ounce feeder? So we know that 16 ounces feeds 80 birds. We wanna know how many birds can we feed with 12 ounces? So can we go from 16 to 12 using multiplication or division? We can't, we'll get a decimal. So what we have to do is first simplify 16 over 80. So we're gonna simplify that first ratio and put it in the middle column. So when you fully simplify 16 over 80, you get 1 fifth. Now we can use this one to use multiplication or division to help us get to 12. So I know one times 12 gets us to 12. So we have to do the same operation on the bottom number, five times 12 to get an equivalent ratio. Five times 12 gives us 60. So that means with 12 ounces, we would be able to feed 60 birds. Number 14, when a photo is reduced or enlarged, its length to width ratio usually remains the same. Aurelia wants to enlarge a four by six inch photo so that it has a width of 15 inches. Use a ratio table to determine the length of the photo. So we want a width of 15 inches. So if you look at the table, the bottom is width. So I'm gonna put 15 in the bottom row because 15 is a width. So we wanna see, can we go from six to 15 using multiplication or division? We can't, we'll get a, a decimal. So what we wanna do is simplify the ratio that we have, four six. If you simplify four sixths, you'll get two thirds. Then we can go from the three to help us get to the 15 using multiplication or division. So three times five gets us to 15. So we do the same operation on the top, two times five. So we get 10. So the new length of the photo, if it has a width of 15, would be 10 inches. Okay, let's do number 16. A veterinarian needs to know an animal's weight in kilograms. If 20 pounds is about nine kilograms and a dog weighs 30 pounds, use a ratio table to find the dog's weight in kilograms. So we have 20 pounds is nine kilometers. We wanna know how many kilometers would a 30 pound dog weigh? So you check, can you go from 20 to 30 using multiplication or division? You can't. So we can try simplifying 20 over nine. But the thing is 20 over nine can't be simplified. It's already in simplest form. So when this happens, what you wanna do is find the unit rate, even if it's a decimal. So I wanna try to get a one here. If I get a one here, then I know for sure that I can go from one to 30. So if I go from 20 to one, that's dividing by 20. So I'd have to do the same thing to the nine, even if we got a decimal. So that would be 0 0.45. So 20 divided by 20 is one, and nine divided by 20 is 0 0.45. So although it's a decimal, it's still technically equivalent because we did the same operation to the 20 and the nine. Now, because I got a one up here, I can use that one to get to 30. So that would be times 30. So now I'm gonna take 0.45 and I'm also gonna times that by 30. And I would get 13.5. So sometimes you get decimals and that's okay. So a 30 pound dog would be 13.5 kilograms in this problem.